Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, this has got to be one of the most expensive practical jokes. After burning through $23.8 billion, NASA is now saying that the SLS is unaffordable. Gee, you would have thought that uh, a launch that cost $4 billion would have sent the message. In any case, should NASA's SLS be scrapped now? And who will save NASA? Could it be SpaceX? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. According to the GAO's 2023 report, NASA requested more than $11 billion to fund the program over the next four years. This new action from NASA follows their declaration that at current cost levels, the SLS program is unaffordable. The space agency plans to add that $11 billion to develop core stages, rocket engines, and other components for the SLS, fundamentally increasing the vehicle's performance and cargo capacity to the moon for the Artemis program. That unintentionally made NASA the focus of criticism by a government watchdog like the GAO. The report said that NASA lacks transparency on the true costs of its space launch system rocket program. There is indeed something fishy here. The cost per launch of the large lunar rocket is about $4 billion, and SLS was just launched for the first time during the Artemis 1 even though they have been in development since 2011. Its design is not completely new because it's built on the space shuttle platform, and the workers responsible for the program were also drawn from the shuttle program. In theory, the number needed to develop the system will never be that high. Now, here are two main and very important questions. How have they used nearly $24 billion for 12 years, and why do they need another 11? The GAO is determined to investigate this matter to the end. Indeed, in their report in 2014, they suggested the space agency develop a cost baseline that captures production costs for missions using SLS Block 1. However, NASA does not plan to measure production costs to monitor the affordability of the SLS program, the report in 2023 stated. Instead, this space organization said they were planning to monitor production costs and affordability of the SLS program via the five-year production and operations cost estimate. This method failed to satisfy the GAO, which said it was a poor tool that made it difficult for taxpayers to measure the costs and performance of NASA and its contractors over time. If this problem persists, the report fears that future hardware development costs for NASA's expensive rocket program, including the upper exploration phase, will spiral out of control. Well, it's safe to say that NASA's rocket has become quite the massive tax-eating machine, not to mention the unreasonably high costs required for development and refurbishment, and also its cost per launch being much higher than that of even SpaceX within Artemis's framework. The current cost per launch launch of the Space Launch Systems Block 1 is $4 billion, as I've said before, and its payload capacity is only about 95,000 kilograms. Therefore, the result will be around $42,105 per kilogram. SpaceX's Starship is quite the opposite, based on the information we found in the New York Times Magazine and Wall Street Journal. In 2023, Elon Musk announced that the maximum cost per launch of Starship is $10 million U.S. dollars. That's literally 400 times less than that of the SLS, with a payload capacity of 150 tons no less. This giant vehicle only costs $66 per kilogram, equivalent to an SLS in the size of a peanut. Truly amazing. But in order to explain the vast difference in cost, there are some things that we must comprehend. First of all, we all know that NASA's giant beast is designed based on Space Shuttle era technology. Indeed, it essentially uses the same booster that flew on the Space Shuttle as well as leftover shuttle main engines and 14 foot long cones. NASA just made some updates on the nozzle and an additional fifth booster segment that gives it 25% more fuel capacity than its predecessor. In theory, reusing old machine parts should save money for NASA, but in reality, 
reality, it costs a heck of a lot. In contrast to the shuttle, the SLS is not reusable, which means each takeoff creates a more than $4 billion hole in their wallet, I mean budget. Not to mention other large unspecified expenses, one of which NASA explains is for refurbishing old features for use. Additionally, 20th century technology appears to be less efficient than today's designs. For example, despite upgrades, the SLS's maximum thrust is only 8 million and 800 thousand pound force, which is a little more than half that of the Starship, yet the cost per launch is much higher. On the other hand, private companies like SpaceX have an advantage when they can call on talented engineers to work for them, thereby coming up with inventions that change the world, such as the Raptor engine, Dragon spacecraft, and even modern features on the Falcon and Starship. Also, Musk himself is a billionaire with a timeless vision, so he is willing to spend huge amounts of money on innovations and upgrades. Unlike the national agencies that existed based on tax, like NASA, which is controlled by various strict laws and political motives. Therefore, any idea or initiative that wants to be applied into practice must go through many complex processes over a long period, and in the worst case, it'll be banned if it does not bring personal benefits to someone. The SLS is a good example, bringing 20th century technology into the 21st century as various rocket revolutions emerged as it became outdated. The obvious consequences of this can be seen in the over-budget problems that both the SLS and its Orion spacecraft has hit under the Artemis program, which honestly isn't very shocking to anyone. And in case the SLS won't evolve, it raises yet another question. Should we abandon the SLS in NASA projects and replace it with the Starship? Well, the obvious answer is no, at least for now. You see, while Starship was being developed, this NASA vehicle was considered the only vehicle currently capable of taking astronauts to the moon, and both Artemis 1 and 2 missions need it. Secondly, unlike the Starship or Falcon rockets that were born to serve the mission, the SLS looks more like a machine serving political interests than a real bona fide rocket. In case you didn't know, to develop its design besides the old features, NASA bought parts that are built by multiple legacy aerospace companies. And to be fair, it did not come from the agency's demand, but rather from political pressure from influential Congress people to keep cash flowing into their district or state. That's the main reason why people jokingly referred to as the Senate launch system. Because of the politics involved, it's not surprising that the SLS's serious problem of deliberate cost inefficiencies was exposed. And once NASA trips up and fails to clarify everything, it'll be difficult for the upcoming Artemis phase to go smoothly. And in a worst case scenario where both the Artemis 2 and the giant moon rocket are delayed, the agency can find an alternative, which is likely going to be the Starship. SpaceX is developing Starship to go to the moon and Mars, and Elon Musk has dedicated himself to making it reliable and viable soon. We don't know when Starship will be available, but at least it is the most perfect choice in the future in terms of capacity, power, modern technology, and development speed. Meanwhile, Blue Origin's new Glenn that accompanies Starship and Artemis, although it was designed the same year as SpaceX's rocket, has yet to conduct any launches. So we're not getting our hopes up for it as much as the Starship. More importantly, Starship's cost per launch is very cheap, equivalent to a quarter of 1% of NASA's lunar super rocket. At least taxpayers will feel more secure because they know their annual tax money is transferred to the the right place and used economically and effectively. And in the future, to recover its reputation after this terrible scandal, NASA might not dare to funnel money to projects like Artemis. Instead, they would carry out more practical work in which they mainly play a management role, with the design and development of this vehicle being carried out by national, foreign agencies, universities, and private companies. In that context, you know SpaceX is always a top priority for NASA. So what about you? What are your thoughts on NASA's current troubles? Let me know in the comments section down below. Otherwise, that's about it, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.